Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, throughout the evening, uh, Gerard has been kind enough to introduce all the guests for us. I think it would be wrong for you to introduce yourself. Uh, Michael, would you do the honours <laughs> and in your, in your butchish Spartan voice, introduce Gerard for us, please? This is Butler! Oh, that's so bad. He did a pretty good job. It's Gerard Butler, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Get listen to that. Congratulations, before we remember, congratulations on your birthday. I just said 40 years old, ladies and gentlemen. There's no way, there's no way I'm going to call you that old. You know that, um, that cream that Michael was talking about? Yeah. Well, I started using that 20 the years ago. Cream. Yeah. So... But you know what? You, well, OK. You, here's someone. You, you lived. I mean, I know you just said you've given up uh, partying and so on for the last 10, 12 years, is it? 12 years, yeah. So you gave up booze completely 12 years ago? Completely, yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that would, I would have thought, you know, help you get yourself back in good shape and so on. But when you party hard, which you did for a few years, normally that takes its toll. Did it take you a while to bounce back? How long was it before you could get back into feeling normal, feeling healthy? It, it didn't actually. It didn't take me that long. So my voice is gone, by the way, from all the shouting. This is. I'm like, Argh. well, it's your uh, own fault. Uh, yeah, you know. You know, if I, you do that that well in the film, because that's a good movie, isn't it? Is Did you like movie? that movie? Yeah. I went out and yeah, bought a pair of red pants after that movie. I don't <laughs> mind telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had the same problem then as well because we tried all different levels of Sparta. It was, yeah. this is Sparta. And then there was, this is Sparta. And then the final one, I said, let me try one more. Big. And I did a huge one. And the second I did it, literally, there was guys in the background laughing. They were like... <laughs> and I went over to, the, the, to Zack Snyder, the director, and I said, all right, that was too much. He goes, no, that was awesome. <laughs> and he's, yeah, is he American? <laughs> <laughs> What did you do before you went to America, before you decided, OK, I want to make it as an actor, which I guess was uh, partly what prompted the move to the States, what did you do? You'd studied law for a while, hadn't you? I did. I studied law for five years, and I trained as a lawyer for two years. And um, a week before qualifying, they said, we uh, think that you're a nut job. And, um, <laughs> and, I, and I, lost, I lost my job. And I, I is, was... that, is that a legal term? Not job. Um, <laughs> I, I, well, it was to them. What, what, why did they think that? What were you doing that was? Well, you know, it's, alarm bells? I was. I was um, many different things actually. Um, one, I wasn't very good. Um, two, I wasn't really trying to be very good. I wasn't inspired. So you, know, you didn't I'm, really want to do it. No, I, I mean, I enjoyed the studying. I was president in the law society and all of that, you know. But I, I, just the more time went on, the more I thought this is this is not for me. Especially when I started working, and. I had what, issues. What was this I had some was issues, you, know? you saw the future stretching ahead yes. and you didn't like what the future held. You didn't see yourself as doing this for 20 years. Pretty much. So, yeah. But that must have been a weird moment, knowing I've given this big chunk of my life to something. And, uh, you know, it must have been quite, I would have thought, it's a bit like pulling the rug out from under yourself, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And, and, and suddenly, suddenly reality hits when I was sitting facing these uh, three senior partners from the firm and they said, you know, we're going to let you go. Um, and, and it's best for you and it's best for us and you know your 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 talents are suited elsewhere <laughs> at the pub um, now and and um, so oh, were you boo were you turn out what were you boozing during the daytime yeah I was I mean I gotta tell you I, <laughs> oh God, I have many stories about that but I I think I had 32 days off in two years and 25 were Mondays and, um, <laughs> And then, there was, right there, and then there yeah. was five Fridays and two Tuesdays. And I think I just, I just did the Tuesdays to make the Mondays more convincing. And, 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 so and how then do you make the leap to America? How do you get yourself over there? How do you get yourself set up as an actor? Well, by the time, um, by the time I got to uh, America, I'd been acting now for a couple of years, you know, and things had taken off and they were going pretty well. Not amazingly. I mean, I didn't go over there as some movie star, but, you know, I, I had my first movie. My first audition for a movie was actually Mrs. Brown. Oh, right. Which I got the role for. So after Mrs. Brown, actually, my manager, who's still my, who's actually my producing partner, um, I was supposed to have a meeting with him in America, and I went out there. I was doing something else, and I didn't even get in touch with him. I mean, this is yeah. my chance at meeting a, an agent or a manager. I didn't even make the call. I came back home, and he called me up, and he said, "What are you? You're crazy. You know, you're. I, you could do great. Let me represent you." Yeah. I so he was so it, it was due to happen in a way. You know, he spotted something, and you you knew you could do it. But it's exciting. I get excited when I see someone. You know. 
following that dream and it, and it happening for them. You know, and I've never met you before tonight, but I was really pleased seeing you in these movies. And when 300 came out, I, I vaguely knew I'd seen you some other stuff like that, and I thought, this is great. And I was so thrilled when it was a big hit. Uh, and especially because it was a, a better movie than it needed to be. You know what I mean? It could have just yeah. been a, a comic book action film, but it had a lot more going on. Uh, must have been a tough one to shoot, though, I would have thought, wouldn't it? It was an intense shoot. I mean, we were... One, I trained for four months before we even started, and I... And that was just, working out and stuff? It was working out, yeah. You, you must have been surprised and delighted with what a huge hit it was, because once again, it's a kind of... It's quite a, a, an out-there premise. And the way it was directed, you know, he proved me right, but it was a very kind of bold choice, wasn't it? It was very stylish, very stark, and very kind of like a, almost hyper the way it was shot, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was... Um, I, I, and I, a lot of that you didn't even see until you saw the movie, you yeah. know I mean? They so would you, have you some... were just shooting a regular film, of course. You we were shooting, a, not even a regular film. I mean, this was, uh, this was more complex than what our whole world was, you know? I mean, it was really just green walls. Wow. Uh, you know, four walls, this, this huge asbestos-filled warehouse. That there was three different rooms, and they would literally just move the same set and turn it around. So one, it was going uphill, then it was going downhill. Yeah, yeah. And then they all added it, you know. At the, so it's all computer-added, all the backgrounds, so almost it, all the backgrounds. Mostly, mostly. The city of Sparta itself was real, yeah. and there was a few real trees. But other than that, you're literally walking around going, there, there's a, something in the distance. Yes, he's been fall. You know, you don't walk and stop. And you yeah. go, look. There's a burning village. Yes, they're over there. They've been following us in Sparta. And you can, can I just say, going, if, you haven't what, seen the film, point... if you haven't seen the film, Joe was acting in the movie is better than you would think. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good, actually. Yeah. yeah. OK. Um, hey, congratulations on the new movie. Uh, I saw you in Gamer a while ago. I thought that was good fun. My little boy loved it. But the new movie is called Law Abiding Citizen. And uh, this is you not just acting. You're now kind of creating these films yourself. You're producing them as well. So I guess you're looking for the, the right kind of role for yourself. Uh, what, what was it about this project? What was it about this character you wanted to do? Well, initially, I wasn't playing that character. I, I, we got a script. Um, actually, for talking about 300, I won Action Star of the Year. And at the award ceremony, this guy I walked up and congratulated me and then said, I'm a writer. And I was like, oh, God, here we go. And, uh, but he wrote this movie, and we said, well, send us a script. Read the script, loved it. Yeah. You know, well, we did a couple of years working on the script, really yeah. fleshing it out to something that we always knew we had the bones of a great, of a great movie but, um, or a great story. But then we fleshed it out. But, and then the more we fleshed it out, the more I thought, you know what, I kind of like him. And it was a role I'd never really taken on before. And it was something I could really, you know, it was juicy. I could get my teeth into yeah. And, and, and it's quite gory as well, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's quite quite intense in some way. Doesn't it's it? pretty it's pretty gory movie, and it's it's pretty shocking at times. And I've seen a few people jump out their seats, and yeah. I've seen a lot of oh no, oh yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Oh, this is a clip of uh, John in action uh, in the new movie Law Abiding Citizen. Have a look at it. In uh, Law Abiding Citizen, he is the Law Abiding Citizen. Oh. You are the law abiding citizen. I got sort of, or maybe. I don't know. Can I tell you a funny story? Please talking, do, please do. Talking about that was yesterday on my way here, I was driving along and there was roadworks going on and I was on my way to the airport and I get pulled over by the police. Now, I've already missed my first flight because I always miss my flights and I missed the first flight. I was trying desperately to get to the second one, but I wasn't speeding. I really wasn't. They pulled me over and they said, uh, you know, you realise you were doing something like 48 and a 40 miles an hour zone. They then said, well, you were driving behind us and we were speeding, so that's all right. But you were wearing a baseball cap and you were driving a big SUV, so we were suspicious. So I'm like, okay. So, and then they go, what are you, what are you doing here? I said, I'm actually, you know, and they said, what, what's your occupation? I said, I'm an actor. And they went, oh. And one guy went, oh, I thought I recognised you. Hi. And he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going down to London. I'm going on to Jonathan Rush. He goes, oh, give us a big shout out. So I'm giving you a big shout out. And, <laughs> but anyway, and then we can't use this show to get you off points off your life. <laughs> This is an abuse. <laughs> I mean, you've got to take your opportunities where you can get it. But, and then he said, so, and, and what are you doing here? He says, you've got a, a movie coming out. And I said, yeah, I, and I have the premiere in Glasgow. And he said, what's the movie called? And I went, Law Abiding Citizen. <laughs> I hope you'll agree, Joe Butler has been a phenomenal guest, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck with the movie. It deserves to be a success. I can't wait to see you next thing. Are you going to stick around for the music? Absolutely. Of course you are. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joe Butler. <laughs>